Hi guys, my project is about Marcel Brewer. He was a Hungarian-American architect from the Bauhaus design period. I'm going to show you a little bit of his background along with four of his architecture pieces and two of his furniture pieces. I also made a um, presentation board with a little bit more information, so make sure you go check that out. So a little bit of his background. He was born May 21st. Um, 1902 in Hungary. After graduating high school, he enrolled at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna to study painting. He quickly realized that he did not enjoy this and left to begin an apprenticeship with a Viennese architect. At age 18, he moved to Germany to a new school called Bauhaus, which was founded in 1919. Um, the head architect was Walter Grupis, Grupius, who we're learning about in uh, the lesson for this week. Walter Grupius was impressed with Brewer and he promoted him quickly to the head of the carpentry shop. In this time, Brewer became acquainted with other important artists in this era like Wassily Kandinsky, Josef Albers, and Paul Klee, noting that Brewer once said that Paul Klee was one of his greatest teachers in life. He is mostly known for the Wassily chair and lived mostly off of the commission of this chair in the early stages of his life. In 1928, Brewer moved to Berlin to start his own architecture practice, but then in 1934 moved to London under the advice of Walter Gruppius due to the threat of Nazis. But this didn't last long. The following year, he moved to Massachusetts to join Gruppius in teaching architecture at Harvard University in Cambridge because the threat of the Nazis became bigger. From 1938 to 1941, Brewer collaborated with Gruppius on different architecture projects in the North northeastern area of the United States. After this, he moved to New York City in 1946, where he would remain for the rest of his life, still working with other notable architects like Hamilton Smith. He retired in 1976. This is the same year that he received the award, the Grand Medaille d'Or by the French Academy of Architecture. I'm sorry, I know I mispronounced that. And then he sadly died of a heart condition in July 1st of 1981 in New York City. So why was he important in design? He was um, important for many reasons, but I found this cool um, article by Patrick Sisson, and it's when designer and architect Marcel Brewer left Europe in the 1930s to teach architecture at Harvard and to start his own practice. It served as a catalyst for the spread of modernist design, a bend in the road as fortress and influential as the curved steel joints in his famous tubular steel furniture. In his teaching days, he was extremely influential and he helped many appreciate and understand this new way of designing. He was really interested in steel and concrete and was ultimately interested in bending technology to sculptural purposes. So some notable partners that he had are listed here. One of my favorites is actually Philip Johnson, and it's this piece right here. It's going to be um, the Glass House, really cool. And then the Bauhaus um, School is actually going to be down here. So some of his architecture, um, the first one, one of my favorites is the John Haggerty House. This one was built in 1938 along the coastline of Massachusetts. Um, when I was doing my research, I actually saw that you can't get a permit anymore to build this close to the water, so that's pretty neat. Um, Walter Gruppius actually collaborated with Marcel Brewer on this one, and people weren't too fond of this building at first. A lot of people referred to it as the ladies' wing at Alcatraz, or a fruit, a fruit crate that washed up on the beach. So um, I disagree with this, obviously. This is one of my favorite pieces, so what do you guys think? Do you like this one? Um, this is another architecture structure by uh, Marcel Brewer. It's the Ariston Hotel. Um, it was designed and constructed in the La Serena neighborhood in Argentina. The curved form allowed for its visual contact with the diverse landscape that consisted of sea and dunes. Unfortunately, as you can see in this picture right here, um, it was abandoned and it's not been taken care of at all so um, but luckily architecture students are actually working to recover this landmark this is another one of my favorite uh, Marcel Brewer architecture structures and it's actually the Hooper house this one was built in 1959 in Baltimore Maryland 
Um, Brewer is the one who developed the binicular house, which has a floor plan with the courtyard dividing each wing of the house. So you can see that in this picture. Um, there's just a courtyard in the center of the whole house. So um, super cool. And this structure was also a collaboration with Herbert Beckhardt. So a little more of the Hooper house. Um, in the Hooper house, we can see that even the designers who have redecorated this house stayed true to what Marcel believed in and used in his design. We can see from this photo that there are accents of steel and tubular objects, which are something that he used a lot. Um, you can also see in this photo from this previous slide right here, this I am a Wassily chair. And I thought that that was pretty cool too. So. All right, another one of his architecture pieces, and I'm going to mispronounce the name, I'm sorry. It's the Haraz de la Huderie. This one was built from 1972 to 1974 in France, and it illustrates a harmony between architecture and environment. This is actually the only residential home in France that was designed by a Bauhaus architect. So some of his furniture pieces, um, the Wassily chair, like we talked about earlier. Um, so first known as the Model B3, and it was later changed to the Wassily after Marcel's friend Wassily Kandinsky. Um, it was manufactured in 1972, or 1927, my bad, um, available in foldable and non-foldable versions. He got inspiration from the bent form of a bicycle handle, handlebar. The steel was available due to development and technology and it still remains in production today by Knoll Furniture, also offering it um, other colors like um, white, brown, or black leather. Um, and this is one of the greatest pieces of modern furniture. So another chair is the Suska chair, and this one was designed just a year after the Wassily chair in 1928. Um, it was actually named after his uh, daughter, Francesca. The tubular steel design was in, uh, inspired from the Wassily chair, and it was the first kind of tubular steel frame can seat that was mass produced. It is still mass produced by Knoll Furniture also in a couple different colors and style selections as you can see over here. Um, it was also named one of the most 10 top most common chairs of this kind. So if you could ask Marcel Brewer one question, what would it be? So I think if I could ask Marcel one question, it would probably be how did he get the um, confidence and the integrity to come up with such a unique design when nothing like that has ever been created before. I think it was really a bold statement for him to go this route with the steel and the tubular design as it has ne never been seen before. Um, so yeah, I just, I would love to see how he was so confident and how he kept going even after receiving such harsh feedback from the John Haggerty house. Hope you guys enjoyed.